it almost sounds liberating as well where you don't have the time to overthink every decision and every little sound that you want to perhaps adjust now you just okay i gotta go ahead with what i've decided this morning so let's go yeah although i still do do that so uh, <laughs> okay. you know because i mean we're talking about three years working on 10 songs mm -hmm. here essentially <laughs> I mean, okay, there were other songs that I started and 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 scrapped and they didn't work out and I kind of abandoned them, you know, halfway through or even before they got started. But essentially, these 10 songs are things that I worked on. And I did, you know, refine, develop, um, and, and you know, and try and perfect them. But you're absolutely right to pick up on this thing that there is a point with music, I think, where it stops being music and it becomes a science project or mm. a, a, te a technical exercise. And it's right. one of the problems actually with with um, modern recording and the fact that a lot of musicians now are not needing to go into studios where they have to pay by the hour. They can, if they want to, disappear into their own creativity for years on end um, without any you know, financial considerations. And I think one of the reasons a lot of music does sound quite homogenized now and quite bland and, and shall we say, lacking a little bit in, in personality. Well, there's two reasons for that. That's one reason. The other reason, of course, is the software now mm -hmm. enables us to, to make everything perfect. And what's, what's interesting about a lot of the great music from history is not what was perfect, but what was imperfect sure. and, and what gave it the character was the quirks, the accidents, uh, the, 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 you know, the things that were not um, exactly right, exactly quantized or exactly tuned, you know, and it's important, I think, to try and hang on to that. Um, mm. It's one, it's one of the reasons I use a lot of processes, which actually make things sound worse for want of a better <laughs> word. For example, one of my favorite plugins is this plugin which makes something sound like it's coming off of a cassette. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. So if I record a piano, a beautiful Steinway piano, and I think it sounds too clean and too hi-fi, I put it through this plugin, which enables me to sound like it's being played back on a cassette that's been recorded over 50 times and and adds hiss and adds character and tape warp. And suddenly something that was a little bit bland and ordinary sounds like it's got all this character and all this history to it. Um, it's well, funny the way, it's funny the way things work out like that. Sorry, go on. Yeah. No, 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 there's just something popped into my head. And I think that's, that's kind of true for all of your music because you have incorporated uh, electronic elements, more industrial, more and more kind of mechanical sounds. But you've always kept that that warmth in your music, the the heart, so to say. That that's what I call it. Uh, are you conscious of that, or is that deliberate, or, or how do you see that side of it? Because, like you say, you can make something too technical, but for some reason, the way uh, you write your songs, there's always a warmth in it, or or a heart, if if that makes sense. It, it, it absolutely makes sense. I mean, I the simple answer to your question is i don't know it's just in my it's in my mm -hmm. dna and and again i you know i always come back to this but i think it's so true is that the music that i listen to that i that i remember hearing the very first of all you know if earliest all in, earliest of all in my life was the music that my parents listened to mm -hmm. and it it was things like dark side of the moon and my mum listened to Frank Sinatra and my, uh, they both listened to things like Carpenter's and Karen Carpenter's voice and these wonderfully golden organic sounds, the sound of Karen Carpenter's voice, the sound of Frank Sinatra's voice, the sound of Dark Side of the Moon. There's something very much to do with the mid-range, this mm. kind of warm acoustic guitars, this kind of mid-range to the voice, a soulfulness to the voice. And... And I've always loved that. And I've always felt like um, sometimes technique gets in the way of, of communicating that warmth and that emotion. And, you know, the best, the best analogy I can give to that is some of these guitar players that play incredibly fast and incredibly technically. Imagine that in the form of conversation. Mm -hmm. So listen, listen to how I'm speaking to you now 
and I'm speaking slowly and you can hear all of the um, the kind of tone of my voice and the expression in my voice and the way I'm communicating to you. And a lot of the way you're understanding me is not just the words I'm choosing, but the way I'm saying them. In fact, you could argue yeah. more, more of it is about the way I'm saying them. And when you start playing with technical precision and speed, it's just about the choice of words. You're no longer getting all of that expression, all of that warmth. And I think part of that is just the fact that I never thought of myself as a musician. I never, I never was interested in being a musician. I was okay. interested in, in being um, a producer, an auteur, someone who would be the captain of the ship. And those were my, those were the, the kind of people I was inspired by, you know, not, not the Eddie Van Halen's, <laughs> but the people that were more like the idea, the Brian Eno's, you know, those kind of people were more inspirational to me.